Uh, meanwhile, a call for proposals to assess Singapore's prospects for geothermal energy has just closed. But it could open a new chapter in Singapore's exploration of the renewable energy source. While the country waits details on the proposals, let's take a deeper look at how geothermal may redefine Singapore's physical and energy landscapes. Singapore does not have enough near-surface heat resources for conventional hydrothermal systems to harness heat from underground hot water or steam. A study suggests that it needs to dig deeper, possibly four to five kilometers down. A reach that is now doable given advances in technology that can potentially draw heat from hot dry rock at greater depths. A system that could work for Singapore is the so-called closed loop system. Now, pipes are bored to a depth of at least five kilometers. A liquid is then sent down the pipes from the surface. As the liquid travels underground, it is heated by the surrounding rocks and earth. Now, this is pushed back to the surface, boiling into a gas that can power turbines or generators to produce electricity. Earlier studies by Nanyang Technological University have already identified sites with promise, including one near Sambawang Hot Spring Park. Researchers have found that rocks in this area could generate, store and transfer heat more readily. And here to share more is Professor Alessandro Romagnoli. Now he's plus director of multi-energy systems and grids at the Energy Research Institute at NTU. Professor Romanelli, let's pick up from what we just mentioned, that site identified near Sambawang Hot Springs Park. Now, I take it you co-led the study that identified this site. And one of the findings was you could actually boil, get cook it, a soft-boiled egg at this site. Uh, again, that's in terms of longer-term use, sustainable use in Singapore. What kind of source of energy might that be? No, thank, first of all, good evening, uh, everybody. Thanks for having me here tonight. And also, well done on the short summary of how geothermal heat could be utilized in Singapore. So uh, regarding your question, I mean, uh, what we see, we, we see that um, uh, the heat uh, near Semba Wang actually might not be uh, negligible indeed. Our temperature data reach 1.5 kilometer depth. And at those that we see that the amount of heat could be useful for either generating uh, electricity or also to generate uh, uh, cooling, chill water for indoor space uh, cooling. So just to give you maybe some quick uh, number, even though the study is in progress and the numbers, are, we are consolidating some of the numbers, but in 2019, Singapore electricity demand to satisfy cooling was around 30%. So 30% of electricity in Singapore went into cooling. So if we wanted to look at geothermal as an option to satisfy part of this cooling demand, geothermal could potentially serve a large chunk of that. And what is more important with the economics that make it look for well as compared to uh, existing technology. If you want to look at electricity, for instance, like you mentioned uh, earlier on, uh, geothermal could uh, produce uh, uh, electricity which is six times uh, uh, cleaner than the current uh, electricity being generated in, in Singapore. And for what it concerns, the, the prices of this electricity, that would be well within the uniform Singapore energy price, which currently is around $300 per, uh, per megawatt hour. So, I mean, overall, we see potential in a, in a number of areas for, for geothermal heat and also, we don't need to forget that geothermal is a constant base load uh, energy power supply with a lifespan of 20 to 30 years, which make, to me makes it very interesting. All right. Uh, we'll get to uh, how geothermal can complement other renewable sources such as solar energy. But for now, you mentioned this cooling system and geothermal has that dual purpose that makes it particularly suitable for I suppose, contributing to cooling systems. If you could explain that for us. Yeah, I mean, uh, depending on the, the amount of heat that we can uh, uh, find uh, underground, um, so we could make use of the geothermal heat for different applications. So for uh, what we call high-grade heat with temperature beyond uh, uh, 150 degrees Celsius, we could think of using geothermal heat for producing electricity, but for intermediate temperature between 100 and 150 degrees Celsius, that is where geothermal heat could be used to generate cooling. 
And the way we do that is by means of uh, machines that are capable to convert the heat that we bring uh, above ground into useful cooling power that can, for instance, be used for a district cooling uh, application. Besides that, I didn't mention about the uh, potential for water desalination. So if we found heat that is even a temperature even lower than 100 degrees, we could potentially make use of the geothermal heat for uh, water desalination by means of uh, multi-effect distillation technologies, which require temperatures around 90 degrees Celsius. All right. Uh, earlier you mentioned the 1.1 kilometre drill you had to do for the site near the Sambawang Hot Springs Park. Now, generally, to get temperatures worth that kind of drilling, we're looking at four to five kilometres. But you believe yeah. that as far as tech development goes in Singapore, we are heading towards getting the right technology that can allow us to drill to that, to that depth uh, more easily without the, uh, I suppose, the, the, the usual consequent costs as well as dangers, and also that we can, at economic scale, be able to exploit whatever energy we find at that depth. Yeah, so uh, first part of the question, I think, is not a matter of whether we can achieve those depths of four or five kilometers. That is possible. There's a lot of extensive experience from the oil and gas sector. Uh, the question would be for... Uh, uh, rock formation like that of Singapore, which is hot, dry granite rocks, whether we can extract heat at the rate and the capacity that will make it uh, uh, economically viable, similar to the um, graphic that you show uh, at the very beginning. So uh, at the moment, what do we see? We see that technologies that could be suitable to Singapore is evolving extremely fast. So just to give you an example, there is a project in the US in which a 400 megawatt electric geothermal project is under development with the intention to be able to supply electricity to the grid by 2026 and to be fully operational by 2028. This project requires a, a, the utilization of a technology that indeed might have to go into deeper depth and also fracture rock. But if you want to look at technologies like the closed loop that you mentioned at the beginning, that could be even better uh, suited for, for Singapore. In Germany, at the moment, there is a project that is aiming to produce a 60 megawatt term, uh, part term in terms of thermal power at 8 megawatt of electricity. And the project will be able to supply electricity to the grid by next summer. So we are talking about a number of months away and to be fully operational by 2027. So. As you can see, technology is evolving fast and also is evolving at that, at that, that scale that it would make it interesting for Singapore as well. Oh, thanks very much indeed, Professor Alessandro Romagnoli. Now, outlining what we can do, what might happen to help Singapore completely redefine its concept of energy security. Well, he's Class Director of Multi-Energy Systems and Grids at the Energy Research Institute at NTU. Thank you for joining us.